Ah, summers in Houston. What's not to love about an eight month long summer cycle? I often tell my friends that don't live here that living in Houston is like living in Satan's armpit. And this year is especially sticky and sweaty. But what makes this heat wave unique is that it's not just affecting Texas, but it's affecting just about every state in our union as well as overseas. And there's no end in sight. So what I wanna do in this video is I wanna give you some tips on how to take precautions to protect your car. Recently, my 911 Carrera had a busted mirror because it became delaminated due to the excessive heat. And then to make matters worse, the convertible top stopped working because one of the motors stopped working right in the middle of this heat wave. And my pristine 2005 Turbo S is not faring any better. The headlights came equipped with a clear PPF and because of the 18 years of time and the unusual temperatures have really done a number on the headlights. So that's what we're gonna be doing in this video is we're gonna get the PPF off of these old headlights and restore it with a new and improved clear PPF from 3M. So with that, let's fix it. Yeah, I wasn't aware that Porsche had put a PPF film on these headlights back all the way back in 2005. And that's what you're seeing peeling off here. It's either that or the previous owner put that PPF film on there. Either way, I gotta take it off and I'm gonna take the headlights out so that I can sand them down on the bench. And then I think I'm gonna put the headlights back in the car while I'm applying the PPF. That way I have the right leverage and it's locked into place and I don't need to put anything in place to hold it down. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull those lights out, put them on the workbench, and we'll take a look at them under the light. Let's see it. But first, I got my camera back. A couple of weeks ago, a couple of weeks, more like six weeks ago, this thing toppled over in the garage and hit something and chipped one of the lenses enough to where I had to send it back to Insta360. Now we all know most of the manufacturers of electronics come out of China and that's the case here, but they have a corporate front in Irvine, California. And that's where I had to send this. And then it sat in their warehouse for like three weeks claiming, and they were claiming that they hadn't received it yet. So this is a booming business. They're doing really well. They're not sponsoring me in any way. I just really like this product. And after I got the lens protected, I've got lens caps to repair this. So if you haven't checked out Insta360, you should because I was showing you this one too. This is the one that I've been using for my FPV view. And this is the brand new one that just came out and it's really cool. So, and they, I was able to put a little logo on there too, which I really like. All right, now that we're on the workbench and we're under some much better lighting and this lighting here is running at about 5,000 Kelvin, but you can see here that it's just peeling back so we're gonna have to get aggressive with this. But before I do, I need to take off the washing cap here. This is what holds the trigger or the headlight washer um, head. The spray head is behind here. We need to pop that out, get some of this trim off. I think I'm gonna run a ratchet strap around the back here just to kind of hold it in place. Now, the reason why I'm doing this off the off, out of the car and not in the car is quite simple. When you're sanding and you're using abrasives, you don't wanna be anywhere near your paint. Uh, the actual putting the film on there, that obviously you have way more control over, so that's not gonna hurt anything. But doing the sanding and the polishing part, I don't, wanna, I don't want this thing anywhere near the car. So I'm gonna do it right here on this cart and knock it out. All right. Now I'm using some plastic trim tools here to just kinda edge it out just kind of slowly back it out there's really no fastener or anything that i can see of so i'm going to assume that it's some kind of friction fit or a snap to fit so i'll just keep doing that and back it out if i can't figure it out then i'll just you know use my google foo to see but that's where i'm going all right kind of touch and go here uh that that this did work it pops straight out but unfortunately it looks like it was broken or i broke it one of the two
I'm gonna start with, I believe a 600, no, 400 grit. See what this does here. I may have to go a little bit aggressive, a little bit more aggressive. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to it as well, just to create a, a lubricant. And we're just gonna start by taking this off here to see what it does. As far as the lubricant goes, I'm using just water and we'll see what's up. This is a, a polisher slash sander. There's a switch right here that you can switch it to sanding, which is what I'm doing. All right, here we go. Yeah, so what it's doing here, you can see, it's just slowly taking a layer off of that PPF to get to the clear plastic. So that's what we're looking at here. All right, so what I'm gonna do next is just keep working it until I get past the plastic. Uh, I may have to up it, I don't know. We'll see, that seems a little harsh. That seems a little harsh right there, all right. I think what it's doing is it's sanding and melting at the same time, and I need to be careful about that. I need to go real slow, because I've got some scorch marks right here that I'll have to work out of the plastic. Yeah. So yeah, you can see right there, it's peeling it back, but I gotta go real slow and keep that pad nice and cool to reduce the melting of that PPF. Yeah, there we go. Just slowly skimming the top off here. Okay, so here's my feedback on using this polisher on plastic headlights. Don't. This thing is not a random orbital sander style, so it will indeed burn your headlights. And in fact, there's a spot here during this time lapse where you'll see me focusing on the area where I went a little too aggressive and scorched the headlight to the point where I had to stop what I was doing and focus on that in the hopes of getting it back to looking like the rest of the headlight. All right, I think I've come up with a better way of getting the spray nozzle out. By popping that thing out, what I ended up doing is just breaking one of the clips. When in reality, I think I should be getting the whole spray head out. There's a clip in there, but you have to raise this up and it's under a pretty good amount of pressure. It's gonna be difficult to do it if you, if you can't get that thing up. So I'm gonna use my Mighty Vac that I've used in the past. I used it for um, testing for vacuum leaks on my EVAP system on the Porsche. And now I'm gonna do it here and I think I can get this to work. Check this out. Keep an eye out right there. I'm just adding pressure. There it goes, see it popping up? And see that gets it up high enough to where I can unclip it. I'm gonna go a little bit higher. There. And I can pull it up. Let's see. Again, what I wanna do is grab that hook in this little clip here and just pull. There, okay, and that comes out and it looks like I can put some new O-rings on that as well. All right, and then I think I can just release this and it goes back in, cool. And I think I'll do that on the other one too so I can get them repaired because you can see that um, it hooks here and it hooks there. So I'm gonna make sure that gets repaired. Cool, right all right. here, And I'm gonna do this one differently. I'm gonna try a different way of getting this PPF off because I gotta tell you, it made a big mess everywhere in my garage, not to mention probably my lungs. And it takes a lot of effort to sand down this PPF. 
So I did some research. I used my Google Foo. And I found that if I use Gugon on here, it should loosen up the adhesive on that along with some heat. So I have my heat over there. I have my Goo Gone. I'm gonna try it, sands the heat first. And then if that is too slow, then I'll come back. But they said they gotta do a couple of uh, sprays on this thing so that it really does its job. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll just put this on here. And we're gonna let it sit and do its thing. All right, I'll come back. So I think I got a plan. The Goo, the Goo Gone is working, but it's working very slowly. But you can see that it is peeling it up. Now, this plastic razor blade did not do the peeling. What did the peeling was um, a, a actual razor blade, which I'm not gonna recommend on this. This is just me doing it. If you got a shaky hand, uh, don't do it. But I'm doing it. I also got my heat gun, which is helping lift the plastic a little bit, the PPF. And then I start it and I'm able to pull sizable chunks. And again, the reason why I'm doing this is because I did do the sanding. But look at this. This is in the air. It's all over my stuff, my camera equipment, and I just flung it everywhere. Uh, because the sandpaper is basically pulverizing the plastic and then turning it into a powder or a fine dust. And in some cases it's wet, which is what's happening here because I was using water to keep it cool and thus it was flinging it. Uh, but clearly when it dries up, it turns it back into a dust. So. This is why I'm doing that. So let me set you up. I think I've got a plan. Let's knock this out. I am scraping this off. It does such a really good job. We've got to be real careful with this little dip right here. This is how I got burned on the other one. Burned literally. Um, the... The polisher just can't get in there and it uses the edge of the polishing tool and it ended up scorching the plastic. So there's that. You can see how easy it is to get all this stuff up. And this is the stuff that I was trying to sand off and, and made the mess that it did, you know. Again, if y'all want to do this yourself, I can't stop you, but don't tell anybody Yogi told you to do this if you mess it up if you do it right say it all you want but if you mess it up don't blame me Let's see if I can get the whole thing off come back up pull it down look at that ha this stuff is so brittle so there's no way of pulling on it there's just no way there's no more elasticity to this if you pulled on it it just tears, see? When I bought this car, it had those raccoon eyes on it that I took off. And uh, and I think some of the PPF may have come off with it because they use like an RTV that goes all the way around here. All right, I just wanted to stop it again in my time lapse to just show you how successful this was. I did not expect it to just peel off the way it did. So I'm really pleased uh, I may do another spray of Goo Gone just to get it to penetrate one more time and make it even easier. Because what I want to avoid doing is making a mistake like I did on the other one and scorching it, burning it, or gouging it. Do a little bit more of this. Let it sit. Who knows? Maybe it doesn't do anything. I don't know. All right, no, this is not sanded. Like I said, once you once I take the PPF off, there's not much more that I need to do. Yeah, you can see some scratches from the removal of the PPF, but I think if I start with a 600 and just do a nice gentle sand right there, 
I might get the results that I'm looking for. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start with 600, see where it goes, and then um, take it from there. Okay, now you see that I'm playing it safe and I'm using a hand sander. It's not ideal, you get a good workout, but by the end of the day, scratches from a hand sander tend to make it more difficult to get a crystal clear result at the end. What I ended up settling on was my Griot's Garage 3 inch orbital polisher. Yes, I should have used that to begin with, but I forgot I owned it. Okay, well there, that's a 600 grit. I got all the yellow off. You saw me switch out to the power one just briefly to get the large surface area going really slow. So, you know, I'm not really worried about burning it if I go really slow. I had to switch to uh, a 220 grit to get the edge, get all of the trim off, but I did, I got it off, it's nice. And then I switched back to a 600 and finished it off. But take a look at all of this stuff that I scraped off the headlight. And again, all that white speckly stuff you see everywhere, including here, is the same stuff except ground down with plastic as well. So this is a much better result, a little bit of heat, and then use a really sharp razor to knock this out. I mean, look at that, that looks really good. I mean, you can't see the light, but this is just the first step. I'm gonna move on to uh, a mother's mag and aluminum polish. This stuff is really good. And for those of you wondering, this basically has a 3,000 to 4,000 grit effectiveness. So if I've taken this down to 2,000, then 3,000 obviously would be the next step. And here we are, and I should be able to stop here. Now keep in mind, you wanna use this stuff sparingly, right? It's, uh, it, it'll splatter everywhere. If you think it was bad over there earlier, it'll be much worse. And I'm not gonna do it manually. I'm gonna use my uh, Griot's Garage orbiting uh, polisher. This thing is a random orbiter and it works great for such an occasion like this. So I'm just gonna put it on one of the slower settings and just go to town and see what the results are, being very careful not to, not to scorch the plastic because that's where I got in trouble the last time. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna start on this small area first just to kind of get used to it and then we'll take it from there. Yeah, that looks really good. Uh, less hazy, but still too hazy for me. Let's keep going. Not bad, right? I still think it's a little on the hazy side. What do you think? I think I'm finding the right speed too. Okay, now wipe it down. I will wipe it down. Just wipe it like I was. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that smoke off. Looking good. I can see through it. always so satisfying when you reveal the work that you've done that looks really good but it I still have more to do it's still really cloudy uh, it's better it's still not not as good as this one yeah it's like it's got way more micro scratches in it I'm gonna have to I'm gonna go aggressive okay all right cool 
All right, so I've reached the limit to what this level of grit can give me in the plastic. That's the conclusion that I've come to. So I decided to take it a step further. Let me show you what's in these little gray, these little brown boxes here, and we can figure out what we're gonna do. All right, so this here is a high level sanding disc and this one's up to 10,000. But I'm not going straight to 10,000, I'm gonna go to 3,000 and then I'm gonna go to 7,000 and then finish it with 10. And I'm gonna take you along the way so that you can see the results on each step. And then you can decide whether or not you need to take it all the way to 10,000. I think once I get to a certain point that I'm satisfied, I'll stop, then I'll switch back to the polish and get that luster that, I, I'm, so, that I'm sorely lacking so far. All right, let's get to work. So I wanted to switch back to the left headlight because this is the one that does not have the deep scratches caused by the hand sanding. I wanted to start and polish this one up, get my technique right, and then move on. Plus I wanted to get that sprayer out of there too. Okay, I'm gonna start with the 3000 grit. It's recommended that you use a foam pad separator between the rigid disc of the polisher and the sandpaper. That way it gives you a little bit of movement in here so that you don't scorch the plastic. That's the biggest issue with polishing plastic is that it can heat up and melt. So you gotta be pretty slow about it. And you can do this wet or dry, and I'm gonna do it dry. And I'm gonna start at a, sand, at a level of one and you'll see that I'm gonna scale up the speed to get it up to about four. All right. So you should be able to see that the particulates coming off this plastic is really fine. So if you have respiratory issues, you may want to consider wearing a mask at this point. If you haven't done so already. So not bad. You can see that the micro scratches are a lot smaller. Let me see if I can just wipe some of that off. Nope, nope. So you can see the micro scratches are a lot smaller, but we got to go smaller than that. I want this thing to be pretty clear before I start the polishing process. And when I mean pretty clear, I mean super clear. Let, let me be clear about how clear I want it to be. Clear. All right. All right, we're making a huge jump and it's not because I wanted to, but because I can't find a, a grit between three and 7,000 on Amazon in a three and a half inch disc here. So this is 7,000. I may have to go a little bit longer on it. Okay, this is 7,000. And I don't really know if it's coming up, but you can really see some of the tiny little micro scratches. It's almost, too you know, honestly, I can't even feel the difference between the 10,000 and the 3,000 grit. Maybe slightly between 10 and three, but seven and 10, I'm not feeling much of a difference. This just feels like paper to me, but we'll see. All right, 10,000. Or 10,000, uh, and I'm gonna do probably four to four and a half speed on the sandy disc or on my polisher. All right, here's 10,000 grit. Pretty good. Yeah, see that glare right there? You can see the reflection. <clears throat> the scratches are a lot smaller. And if I'm smart, I'm gonna put up a 3,000 or a 2,000 grit side by side so that you can see that. I think I'm ready to polish. All right. Just kind of spread it out that way, that way it doesn't fling everywhere and it start really low. So there's still a little bit of water in this thing. Trying to see what you see. I mean, that looks pretty good. Let me bring you in. 
I'm not even entirely sure this is going to show up, but if it does, there's that glare right there so you can kind of see what I'm dealing with here. But yes, the scratches are getting smaller, almost invisible. Yeah, I don't know what that is right there. Some kind of stain in the plastic. I haven't been able to get that out. But man, that looks good. And in case you're wondering, yes, I'm going to try out the purple pad now. It's a little wet. I'm going to have to fling it around to get some of the water out of it. Uh, but, I mean, that's what this channel is all about, right? Is I'm going to do this so that you can figure out the easiest path for you. And you give me a like and you subscribe to my channel. That's all I ask for. All right, let me fling this around. Put it right there. So a little tip, you don't want to just turn this on, not on anything, because it's a random orbital, and this thing will go bonkers, and then you'll lose control of it. So keep it on something, and just turn it on. Fling all the water off of it. Wow. I mean, that's really good. I showed Yogi Mama this. She's like, I think that's as good as you can get. And I believe that when I put the PPF on this, and when the adhesive is loosened up and applied to the plastic, the adhesive is gonna uh, fill in the tiny little micro scratches, sort of like the over-the-counter headlight polishers out there where they polish, polish, polish with sandpaper, and then the last bit is a liquid UV uh, coat on top. Well, that liquid UV coat is also a filler by its nature, right? So it's gonna fill in all the little micro scratches and make this thing look clear. But I'm not afraid to bring it in even tighter, so I'm going to switch to a different lens and show you what we're looking at. All right, I got the headlights in. They look really good. It's time to put the PPF on this. And this is what I'm gonna be using to apply the PPF. All right, so what you're gonna need is um, some baby shampoo. This kind right here, it doesn't have to be CVS. It doesn't have to be CVS brand. And mix it up with some water. That's what's gonna help with the lubricant to move the film around to get it into place. You're also gonna need a spray bottle filled with really hot water. Not boiling water, but hot, hot water. Uh, that's gonna help uh, loosen the adhesive up and activate it and cause it to stick. So I'll show you how to do all that, but you'll be using the hot water during the adhesive phase, not the placement phase. That's what the baby shampoo is for. And of course, an assortment of squeegees, preferably new ones or ones that are not all scuffed up or scratched. And then I have a fabric one here and two different size squeegees. And then last but certainly not least is a high quality razor blade that snaps off like this. And when I mean high quality, I bought this part. I bought this in a kit and this cutter in a kit along with some other tools. But this is the only two things that I'm pulling out. And I replaced the razor blades with a much higher quality razor blade. And this one here... I'll put a link in my affiliates section so that you can uh, get your hands on these if you're interested. But they're wicked sharp and uh, really good quality. Good reviews on this as well. Okay, and this should be enough to at least cover three, maybe four headlights. I may need to get more for Pepper, but all we're worried about right now is CK. All right, let me get set. All right, I've got my hot water. I've got my baby shampoo ready to go. I've already cut this down to size. The lens is clean. So now all I gotta do is uh, wet this up and then peel it. We can get it on the glass. What I wanna make sure is that I didn't pick up any debris along the way. I just wanna spray this. Get it nice and slippery. 
This here, nice and slippery. It's just baby shampoo. Okay. And then just peel it. All right. And when you peel it, you want to get it wet underneath too, so it doesn't stick together. Nope. There we go. Up there. No sticky. Not yet. There. Okay, and then you just place it right there. You want to make sure you get it overlapping perfectly. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of curves here, so you got to be aware of that too. And then what you want to do is find an anchor point, like right there. This is where I want to put it, right there. And then I'm going to use the hot water. Right there. To hold that. want to get it a little stretchy too on the curve you want it to stretch because otherwise you'll get a crease right where you don't want it but this is sticking pretty good and I can tell you just as I suspected, the adhesive is filling in all of the uh, cracks. So what I'm going to need to do is trim off this excess, this excess here, so I have a little bit more flexibility. You shouldn't be surprised if you have to change out your razor blade. Okay. Now this is the time when you use the hot gun, the heat gun, to get this final little, any little pieces that won't stick, you can use the heat to accelerate it right here it's being real stubborn so I'm gonna use the heat gun on low you can use a blow dryer too but this is gonna help activate it there that sit and I'll work on the other one but this time I'm gonna put you guys on time-lapse
Okay. All right, there you go. You saw that it is kind of an ordeal to get the lenses as clear as possible. I went all the way up to 10,000 grit. Now, do I think you need to go that high? Probably not. I think three to five to 7,000 grit will be fine. And like I said, when you put your clear coat or in my case, the PPF on there, it'll fill in those micro scratches and make them look crystal clear. So you can see this PPF here is made by 3M. I'll put a link in the affiliates below. Anything you buy from that link, I get a small little commission, and I mean really small, but it goes to the channel and it helps me fund projects like this, you know, like coffee or a pack of gum or something. But still, I really appreciate your help. What would really help me too is if you guys hit that like button or the dislike button if you didn't like the way I did this. But either way, when you hit that, I'm in the algorithm, I get a chance to get liked by other people, and if you like my channel, I would really appreciate any support you can toss my way. So what's next for Project CK? Well, the passenger door has a problem with actuating when the top is up, meaning that it's not lowering down a few centimeters to clear the top, so I'm gonna have to figure that out the next time we look at CK. For my 911 Carrera, you saw that I got the AC going and I still gotta do the headlights on that one. Once I do that, I'm probably not gonna do a video on the Carrera, but I'll show you what it looks like and you can see for yourself how good that one can look with PPF on the lenses as well. So with that, thank you for watching, like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Yogi's Garage.